Uh, Revelation chapter 12. Many wonder about the about the woman, the man-child. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I just want to want to bring two points together so that to make what I want to say a little more understandable. And I'll, I'll say it like this. This is what I believe concerning the the man-child, the woman. The woman, and this, this is this, and and I believe I can explain this. So, would the woman is the is the present-day church, the body of Christ. The man-child is the overcomer that's going to rule and reign. Now, I, I, can, I can qualify that by saying this, because the man-child, she brought forth the man-child. This is Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. She brought forth a man-child who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now, keeping that in mind, a man-child who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. To him that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with what? Rod of iron. So we have a man-child born out of a woman that's going to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And then the Lord Jesus Christ said, To him that overcometh, well, I give authority over the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. So there's either two competing rulers, or the two are one and the same. The, 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 the logical explanation is that they're one and the same. So the, so the man-child, then, is, is, is the, are those that have qualified. For instance, in Revelation chapter 5, Verse 9, they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals, sir, for thou wast slain, and hath redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. That spans all of history and all the world. And hath made us, see, that's the man-child. That speaks of, of one that has come to full maturity hath made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign. That reigning means ruling. So that would be the, the rule with a rod of iron. That means an authoritative rule. Now, coming back to Revelation 12 then. The woman here... <clears throat> And she brought forth the man-child. That ringing forth, well, verse 2, this is, this is what I'm looking for. Revelation 12, verse 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth. Travailing in birth. That travailing has to do with intercession. And intercession or travail or childbearing is never a pleasant thing. Deliverance is never a pleasant thing. There's a, there, there, there's a birth thing. Now, Isaiah for, chapter 42, and then we'll go from there. Isaiah 42. <clears throat> Verse 13. Isaiah 42, 13, I believe this is prophetic of the last days. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Now, I have long time holding my peace. I've been still and refrained myself. This is the church age where the Lord has worked within lives in in, in preparation for an end-time visitation. I have holden my peace. I've been still 
and refrain myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. See, the, man ch the, the woman giving birth, the Lord. And I've had this sense for some time. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. That's the birthing, our preparation for the last days. I will destroy and devour. That is, 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 is the, the, the Adamic being removed through that dealing, through that working, where our nature is being changed, where we're being released to come into the flow of the power of God. So then intercession involves a manifestation or an operation of God. Now, before I want to say, I want to say some more about intercession, I want to say a couple more things about the manifestation of the power of God. Isaiah, uh, Genesis, Exodus chapter 19. <clears throat> Verse 10, the Lord said to Moses, go to the people, sanctify them today and tomorrow, let them wash their clothes. That's a time of preparation. And be ready by the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people. In other words, today and tomorrow, a day is as a thousand years. We are in the time of the closing out of the church age and an introduction into the kingdom age. I've been lo I've long time holding my peace, but now will I cry like a travailing woman. That has to do with the birthing. A birthing is a transition from one to age into another. Verse 16, it came to pass on the third day in the morning, the Jewish day begins at six o'clock in the evening. In the morning, is in that transitory time towards, towards the return of the Lord, towards the birthing. I believe we're in that time. On the third day in the morning, there were thunders, lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and, a, and the voice of a trumpet. See, the voice of a trumpet, exceeding loud. Now, this voice of the trumpet, here's something interesting. Don't lose your place. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. The voice of a trumpet, exceeding loud. And this is, this is what we're hearing. It's a call into intercession. It's a call into the place of where, where, where the Lord can become active, prophetically, sovereignly active within our lives. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 gives us the setting. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, that's into the realm of the Spirit, I will come in. After, now, chapter 4. After this I looked, behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a what? A trumpet. That's a call. That's that prophetic call to intercession. That's that that. that that, that creative call, a voice of a trumpet which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, behold, a throne. That's governmental. And so there's the birthing or an introduction to the governmental, to the eternal, that's taking place. Now, on the third day in the morning, there were thunders, lightnings, a thick cloud upon the mount, the voice of a trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that were in the camp, what happened? What, what, is, what does the word say? They what? They trembled. See, see, under the power of God, the manifestation of the power of God, they trembled. <clears throat> now, chapter 20, verse 18. And all the people saw the thunders, the lightnings, the noise of the trumpet, the mountain smoking. That's, that's visitation when the Lord begins to move. And when the people saw it, they backed up or removed. And they said to Moses, speak to us and we'll hear, but let not God speak to us. In other words, at that particular time, Israel rejected the manifestation of the power of God. 
the manifestation of the power of God is, is, is scary. Now, I've been privileged or blessed that, that I have been in several major, I mean major visitations or movings of God. I have seen it. I've seen intercession that is, I mean, that's absolutely scary. But I've seen the outcome of it. And I've seen lives transform, change, the power of God manifesting. And I have never seen anyone hurt or anything come out wrong through a manifestation of the power of God. It's always come out, always. In 1958, for two solid weeks, I was in what I would say would be a major visitation of God. And some of the things that happened were absolutely scary, but lives were absolutely transformed. So then, there's a preparation of God for the return of the Lord, for the glory. Remember, after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, bringeth them up into a high mount, and he was transfigured. In other words, there was a revelation of glory. When we come into that revelation of glory, the people trembled or shook. I have been in the power of God. I've had, personally, I've had the power of God move on me to the point where if it had lasted one-tenth of a second longer or become any more intense, I would have exploded, died, or gone insane. I mean, I couldn't, it backed off, but that was all I could handle. When I came out of that, my life was changed transformed and I begin to understand through the direct we we are in the time see in the church age it's it's this woman the woman the church the travail the birthing the man child is caught where up to the throne so then after so then in revelation 4 I heard a voice saying come up come up a voice of a trumpet saying come up and immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne. The man child is caught up to the throne. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. So then, the presence of God always. And, and it, this is Exodus chapter 19, verse 11. Be ready by the third day. This Be ready. See, this is, this is a millennial day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people. See, I've long time holden, refrained, but now will I cry like a travailing woman. Now, I want to come back. Intercession always is instigated by the Lord. I could say now, let's pray. I cannot say, let's intercede. Intercession or a birthing is, any woman knows this, is intense. It's agonizing. And yet, Something comes out of it. Life comes out of it. And so now will I cry like a travailing woman. And there's that birthing process where we are being introduced, where the power of God is beginning. See, the Lord, I believe gently, there's touches of it, then he backs up. And I believe that we're being introduced, that when in that greater day that's before us, in the return of the Lord, where there will come the manifestation of the power of God. The Lord is, is, is preparing us that we will accept it. Some in, in, in Toronto, for instance, I've been there, I haven't been there for a long time, but I was there in the beginning, and I saw people shaking until I was scary. But afterwards, they said, one lady I remember in particular later, later said she had flown from Holland. She heard something, and she was desperate. I saw that woman on the floor shake like it was scary. I thought, that her, I thought her arms and legs were going to disintegrate. I mean, but later she said that she had met the Lord, that her life was transformed and changed, and testimony after testimony. And so... <clears throat> Be ready by the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people. So in that, believe that, that we're in a special time where the Lord is beginning to move in these special ways, to reveal, you know, to manifest, to make his presence known. 
Israel, Israel said this, and I believe the Lord gave me this by revelation. Israel said this, the people saw, this is again, now Exodus chapter 20, verse 18. All the people saw the thunderings, the lightnings, the noise of the trumpet, the mountain smoking, and when the people saw it, they backed up. And they said to Moses, speak to us and we'll hear, but let not God. In other words, we don't want this. See, we don't want this. And this, and this, this, this is what happened. God withdrew from the people into a temple an outer court where the people were, a holy, of holy, a holy place where, where a priest went once a day to make a sacrifice, then God withdrew into a 10 by 10 cubicle where a high priest went once a year, where the priest went in, the high priest went in once a year to receive a word for the people, went back out. That was not God's highest. That was his condescension because they said, the people said, to the Moses, you hear from God and tell us what he said, but we don't want these manifestations because they scare us. Amen. <laughs> See, we are flesh. We're human. The po God is powerful. Now, I'm different than some. There's a whole range of in, 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 in our makeups. There can be enough going on in me to set off a hydrogen bomb. It doesn't. It, it doesn't. It doesn't even show. <laughs> Literally, there can be enough going on to set off a hydrogen bomb. It doesn't show. Others, the Lord touches them and they go through the ceiling in 50 different directions. <laughs> because that's that's an emotional makeup. So some confuse the emotion with with, with God. But see, the emotion is our reaction to God. It's not the presence of God, but it's our reaction to it. And we're learning because we haven't been here. And so we don't always do things right. <clears throat> now, let me see if I can find a verse. And then I want to come back and talk just a little more about intercession. I want to find a verse in Proverbs. It's Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 4. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 14. It won't make much sense when I read it unless you've heard, probably unless I've said something or someone that's heard what I said. Where no oxen, this is Proverbs chapter 14 verse 4. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Now, <clears throat> we're going to equate the ox to the supernatural, to the manifestations of the Spirit. Because there always, in any given service, there are those that are more emotionally constructed than others, and, and, and there, there's always different types of manifestations. Some are from the Lord, some aren't. But, <clears throat> but in that... There is the revelation, there, there's the pure, there's that which is of the Lord where we're learning and where we make corrections and adjustments and we move towards it. In the passage that I just read from the Old Testament, the Lord withdrew, the people trembled and shook in his presence, and that was all right. The withdrawal of the Lord came when the, when, when the people said to Moses, Moses, we don't want this. The Lord said, all right, you don't have to have it. I'll, I'll move into a, a 10 by 10 cubicle and I'll stay there. And a priest can come in once a year into, into my presence and you won't see me again. See, the, the originally what the Lord said, I will come down in what? In the sight of all the people. The third day I will come down in the sight of all the people. Well, the people begin to tremble, shake, because... God is, is, is God. And I have had these experiences in, in glory, in the manifest presence of God. I want to tell you, it's scary. So then, the supernatural, where there's no, where the, the oxen, where there's no manifestation of the supernatural, 
there'll be no problems. The crib is clean. But the problem is this. Much increase comes by the strength of the ox, which means if you keep the ox in the crib, you're going to have some messes to clean up. <laughs> it's kind of crude. So if you don't want to clean up the messes, what do you do? You kill the ox. You get rid of the supernatural. You get rid of the manifestations. And you won't have any messes to clean up. It's real simple. <laughs> but the problem is this. Much increase is by the... See, the man-child is born up out of travail. Out of that travail, the woman travailed, and there was, there, there, there was a spiritual authority that was released that would, would be as a rod of iron, that spiritual authority. The world is laughing at the church today. I think you know that. The church is considered like a mosquito bite. You know, it's a little itch that'll, you know, it, it doesn't affect anyone. They know that that's just about the effect that the church has. But supposing the church was empowered. Now, I'm going to show you, see, this ox, <clears throat> much increases by the strength of the ox, the manifestation, the supernatural. But where there's manifestations because of our emotional makeup, there's going to be problems. People tremble and shake and you get kind of nervous. This the Lord is showing me. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Verse 12. This, 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 I could almost write a book on this. This has been unfolding for months. Because I've been asking the Lord about the end time. Revelation 1.12. I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. This is the church, the whole range of the church, the fullness. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. In other words, the garment is from his neck to his feet. He's the head, we are the body. The body's covered. From that, what, 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 what can be said is this. See, the body is covered. He's in the midst of the church, but as far as the world is concerned, the body's covered. There's no real manifestation of authority or power because the body is yet covered. But all creation is groaning, that's, that's their intercession, for the manifestation of the sons, the man-child. See, the sons, the man-child, the man -child. man-child means a mature son. That's all it means, a mature son, those that have come to maturity. So then, <clears throat> one likened to the Son of Man clothed with the garment. In other words, that, that covering, this, this means that what's happening within us, the change, the progression, the development in our lives is more important than what we're doing. See, the body's covered. It's not revealed yet to the world because we're covered. But the third day, now I, I read this verse, and I want to read this. It's in Luke chapter 13. I read the verse in Revelation in Luke 13, and then I can say what I want to say. And this, I believe, is where we're at presently and why the things that are happening are happening. Herod had asked, Herod was the ruler of, this, of the world of his day. And he asked concerning Jesus, Luke chapter 13, verse 32. He said to them, go and tell that fox. That's his opinion of politicians. <laughs> I do cures today and tomorrow. That's the 2,000 years of the church age. The third day I shall be what? Perfected. Now the head's revealed, the body's covered. We're here... We're here as a gathering of the body of Christ. But we're here without the head. But he's at the right hand of all power and authority, ever living to make intercession. He's in the heavens as a bodiless head. We're here as a headless body. 
So that end time perfection, that third day, see, we're there, the closing out of the church age. That means the head and body are going to come together, and the body's going to begin to manifest the power, the resurrected power, see, the glorified head. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, bringeth them up. After six days, that's, see, that's today. Now, I want to come back to Revelation. He's clothed with a garment down to his foot. His head and hair were white like wool. That's full maturity. His eyes as the flame of fire. Now, when he takes his headship, these eyes as a flame of fire, he has a two-edged sword. We have that in a previous verse, that two-edged sword. That's, that's the word with authority. See, the authority, the quickened word. These eyes as the flame of fire, when we come into his end, into that end time relationship with him of his headship, where he begins to take his head in the sense of the glorified Christ, he's going to reveal himself first to the church, to the body. There's going to be an authority restored. And this is, this is what I believe. The days of Ananias, Sapphira are going to be restored. You're going to be able to walk downtown anywhere Walk up and said, you're a drug dealer, you're selling drugs, and unless you repent and stop instantly, you'll be dead within a day. See, the eyes is a flame of fire. The people, the, the people of this world will cry out for the rocks to fall on them. Why? Because there's an authority that's being restored mm, to the body. These eyes is a flame of fire is a spiritual authority, the rule of a rod of iron. Mm. See, we're, we're there. And so these, the people shook. See, the third day I will come down in what? The sight of all the people. So then there's that empowering of spiritual authority that's coming. So there's a preparation where, where, where our being has to open to the manifestation, the operation of the supernatural. And, and it, it is scary. And so we can do one of two things. We can kill the ox, <laughs> and there'll be no... The Lord will stay in his ten by ten cubicle because his desires to come out of the box. There's nothing in the Word that says about, about the temple. But let me... Let, uh, I want to read something interesting. This... I know many people are looking for the, for, for the temple to be rebuilt. But there isn't, there isn't anything really in the Word. But in Psalm 102, verse 16, when the Lord shall build up Zion, that was the place of intense worship where David's tent. Zion was the high place in Jerusalem. It's Psalm 102, verse 16. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall what? appear in what? His glory. Now, in order to handle that glory, we have, there has to be an introduction, a preparation. The flesh has to get out of the way. And, and, and see, when, when he, in the Old Testament, when, when, the, when the Lord said, I'll come down in the sight of all the people, what did they do? They shook, they trembled. Because we have to be, there's the conditioning that has to take place in order to be able to handle it, to handle that. So there's two aspects to this. The one is the is the is the restoration, the revelation of glory. See that restoration of glory, where we're being conditioned, introduced to the glory, because we're in that time, where there's that unveiling is a gradual thing, the parousia, the same Jesus, just as you see him go. He was here for 40 days before he went up. The Christians were hiding in little groups, hiding behind locked doors. All at once, he would, there he was, standing there. They were empowered. The place shook under the power of God. And they tur- the places shook, if you read Acts, the place shook under the power of God. But they turned that world of that day upside down. Now this same Jesus, just as you see him go, Took him 40 days. He began to appear to groups of Christians. He empowered them until the place shook, which meant they were shaking so much that they shook the place. (laughs) Because we have to be conditioned. 
And I have been in some powerful visitations. The revelation, the understanding I have, the things the Lord's showing me, have come out of those, those times of visitation, of, of, of the manifest power of God. And the Lord is seeking to reveal his glory. We're in that time of transition. And now will I cry like a travailing woman. See, and, and the Lord's going to come forth. And that judgment is going to come through the body. See, he's going to see the world is laughing at the body. And the prom, the, this, see, all that was lost, that Adam lost, is going to be restored. There's a tremendous healing movement about to take place. But it's not going to come through a new breed of Betty Hens. It's going to come in the body. And it's going to be, whew, mm. see, it's going to be everyday people with no personality, no giftings, and no ability. And the Lord's going to begin to move powerfully through them. And he's going to manifest his glory, see, not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in, who knows the next word, demonstration of the Spirit. See, it's, that's 1 Corinthians chapter, what is it, chapter 2. My speech, my preaching, I have prayed this hundreds, maybe a thousand times. I've held this before the Lord. My speech and my preaching is not, with the, is not to be with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Hallelujah. Glory. It's scary, I want to tell you. It's scary. But see, we're getting ready for the return of the Lord. And that voice of a trumpet, when it be, it's sounding right now, and there's an intercessory burden going out, there's the beginnings of a revelation of the presence of the Lord. See, that, that, that empowering. And the Lord's moving out. He's testing the water. When he walked with the two on the way to Emmaus, they said later, did not our hearts burn. But when they came to the gate, that gate is that point of transition out of the earthly into the heavenly. They said, did not our hearts burn within us while we were yet in the way? But when he came to the gate, he made as though he would go further. They asked him, they compelled him to come in. Then he broke bread and their eyes were opened and he disappeared. See, he was there. So then <clears throat> the Lord is testing in a sense He's testing our availability, our willingness. We're in, and we are in the time of the parousia, the birthing of this man-child authority. This world, now, the word that was given to Eve was this. Satan, or it was in, indirectly to her, but the Lord said to Satan, y you bruised their heal, but they will bruise your head. And I've often said, Lord, why don't you zap the devil? You know, be so, life would be so nice. <laughs> and the Lord said, I'm not going to do it, but you're going to do it. See, that's the word that was given. You bruised their heel, but they are going to bruise your head. So there is an, an end time empowering where Satan is to be brought down. I'll, I'll read it. Isaiah, Isaiah 14. <clears throat> Isaiah 14. And we'll find it in Proverbs. <laughs> <coughs> Verse 6, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 6. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, that's Satan. He who ruled the nations in anger is persecuted. How? By the overcomer, by the church, our worship. What's, what's the result of that? The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. That's the church being empowered that end time power, that empowering. And the result is, see, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. 
That's the kingdom of God, the millennial kingdom. But it's going to be brought in through the body being unveiled, uncovered, empowered, the eye as the flame of fire. That eye, there's an authority, and it's going to begin with a healing movement, but it's going to be a ministry that's going to come through the body. Therefore, the Lord is beginning to move on the body to create an opening where he can move in to make room. Mm. Thank you, Lord. See, to make room where he can move in, empower, equip us. And so I believe the manifestation now that the, the, this morning, that was, inter, that was an intercessory manifestation of, of, or, or prophetic demonstration of, of, of the Lord moving. I've been praying, actively praying, for, a prophet, for the Lord literally to move into Pinecrest in visitation, in the prophetic, for an abiding prophetic anointing on these grounds where lives would come, be changed, transformed, opened. But that comes through intercession, travail. After the baby's born and cleaned up, everybody says, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that nice? <laughs> Including the mother. But the birthing process, you, you don't... See, that's, that, that's what's happening. There's a birthing uh, and, 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 and into each of you. There was, there was an impartation into your life, and down the road you'll see that something happened. There would be where, where there was uh, that circumcision, that breaking in, where, where in, it, it, it takes... You, see, it's easier to guide something that's in motion than to get something in motion, and it takes a lot. And so there's, there, there's that of the Lord moving. Now, I've, been in a, I've seen down through the years powerful visitations and manifestations, and I've seen ministries' lives transformed through them. We're in a time of intercession where the Lord's raising up intercessors, where the Lord's seeking in, in, in all of our fellowships, our churches, our lives, our personally, individually, See, where that unveiling is beginning to come, the individual. The church, the body is going to be empowered. That's the word I have. It's moving. The emphasis is moving from the pulpit to the body. And these ministries, this eye is a flame of fire. It's an authority. See, the apostolic, it's not that the Lord's going to raise up a new breed of apostles. He's not going to do that. Rather, there's an apostolic anointing being imparted into the body where you can speak the word of the Lord with authority. And that authority will be done in a demonstration where there's that circumcision so the Adamic is opened and you can see the unveiling of the Christ. Hallelujah. See, and it comes through that intercessory impartation and burden. It comes through that. And so... We can, we, we, we can have a nice clean crib, a nice service with no problems. But power comes through the, see, <laughs> yeah, see, see there, 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 there's a birthing. And if this is the first time you've seen something like this, it probably scares you. Next time won't scare you quite as much. <laughs> <laughs> And once you've seen the result of something like this, you'll dive in, literally. When you've seen the result, see, the outworking. In, 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 incidentally, I just want to share one more thing about intercession prayer. God does things in three. He reveals himself in three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We're to reflect the Lord. We're, we're, we were created in his image, therefore we're created in three, body, soul, and spirit. In nature, there's always a balance in threes. But there were three, I believe, three archangels. Michael, the warrior, Gabriel, the messenger, Satan, the worshiper. In Ezekiel 28, it won't take time to read it, but his being was like an organ. He was the worshiper of the universe. And he corrupted, I believe, an, uh, an original creation that was on this earth. When they find a bone that's 100,000 years old, I believe there was a, a pre-Adamic creation that was corrupted and destroyed, and that would account for, for demons, disembodied spirits. 
but he, he, uh, he fell from his place. I will ascend. I will be like the Most High. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. See, that's, and he lost his place. The word Satan that had been an archangel became a, a bad word. <clears throat> but because he led in worship, see, he was the worshiper. He fell from that place. It's vacant. But the principalities that were brought down that now have gone into that place, see, we wrestle not. It's interesting. Jesus said, preach the word, heal the sick, cast out demons. But principalities are fallen angels. You don't cast out a fallen angel. They're not a disembodied spirit. So in Ephesians 6, the word says, we wrestle. Well, you wrestle, you displace. So if Satan was a worshiper, how do you wrestle with him? You take his place in worship. See, you take his place. So when the church begins to worship, you're pushing down principalities. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. There's an overcoming people today as never before. Overcomers are being caught up. So then spirits, principalities are being pushed down. So what's the result? Random violence shootings, drive-by shootings, shootings in the schools, people doing things that we don't know why we did it. Because principalities are becoming angry, they're being pushed down, they know their time is short, so they're venting their anger in all kinds of random violence. It's increasing. Why? Because the overcomers are increasing in the heavens. Amen. <laughs> That's right. See? And, it's, and cheer up, it's going to get worse. <laughs> yeah. So there's that increase in random violence because see of, of overcomers. So then we're being brought up into the realm of the spiritual. There's that empowering. See that the the authority, the eyes as as a his eyes as a flame of fire. See that's the <clears throat> now Acts one eight. For just a moment, ye shall receive power. Acts 1 8. <clears throat> but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost, and ye shall be, not do, be witnesses. Now, I've shared this. The Greek word for witness, martyr. That means that he's taking, see, the third day I'll be perfected. What's that perfection? My head has to go. And his, and his head's taking, see, the eyes of the flame of fire, then that authority's going to move through the body. See, the authority's being imparted into the body. And, it's, and, and there's going to come a manifestation, a demonstration of that authority through the body. Because... The word was to Satan, you bruise their foot, but they're going to bruise your head. It's the body that's going to do that. So there's, there is an empowering with the supernatural through the manifestations, the operation of the Spirit. We're being prepared because this is an end time. Truth, the revelation. Therefore, the present word of the Lord today is Romans 12, 1 and 2. I saw a movie some time ago in a little Baptist church several years ago, and they had this, <clears throat> the, over, over here's the desk and over here's the guillotine. All the Christians are lined up, and the man sitting there with a rubber stamp that said 666. So you had to walk up and hold your hand out, and he stamped 666 on you, 666, and you're released. See, man's number is six. Man's deifying himself as 666. That's man, seek, that's man displacing God and becoming God. And so, but if you're refused, you had to go over and bend over and zippity-do, off come your head. <laughs> so then the rest of the movie was all about these people standing in line struggling. What are they going to do when they get up there? Are they going to compromise or lose their head? And this is, this is supposed to be an end time thing, the Antichrist. Well, that, they, I believe they missed it. I don't believe that's going to happen at all. There will be persecutions and all that. 
But we are going to lose our heads, but not to a not not physically to a guillotine. But we're to present our bodies a living sacrifice. See, that's that's what the Lord is saying, because this head has to go to make room for the glorified head. Therefore, if the glorified head comes, then the body has to be able to handle and respond to glory. And because we've never been in glory, there's all kind. We tremble. We shake. We we do funny things, <laughs> scare people, <laughs> and see all these things begin to happen, but it's a preparation for glory if we'll stick with it. It'll come out right. Whew, glory, hallelujah. See, it'll come out right. The Lord knows what he's doing. It'll come out right. And he's getting us ready. See, ye shall be, be witnesses unto me, not of me or for me, but a witness unto that means that I'm, as I witness unto him, I become one with him, then his life is reflected through my life. He takes his headship. The head and body is beginning to come together. And so there's going to be an increase in manifestations, in the operations of the Spirit, in these things. It's going to increase. And the things that are happening today are sort of a conditioning to get us ready, you know, just to let us know. That the door is just here and there in different places, but all at once it's going to begin to break out everywhere. Because the authority, that authority, the body's going to begin to get energized and begin to function. Not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration, see, of the spirit and of power. The same as you have ranks in human government, there's ranks in, in satanic government. There are very strong principalities, there are lesser ones. The powers that are, are the rulers of darkness, I believe demons are under, under the headship of, of, of fallen angels. And uh, much deception has come, for instance, in Mormonism, their angel, Moroni, he, that, that's a fallen angel that broke through and brought that deception, and there's other areas. Muhammad, Mohammedism, Muhammad would be, would the, 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 uh, that, that happened through a fallen angel that broke through in Islam. The Allah that they worship is not the God that we worship. It's a fallen angel. That's why there's the violence and all the, all the violence of, 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 of Islam. Their Allah is not the God that we serve the fallen angel that broke through to Muhammad. And there's touches of that in different, in different of, of the cults. You'll find, you'll find that. But there's coming an empowering, see, of the church to, speak, to, 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 rate, to rise up. See, it takes, there, there's a lesser, a demon is, there's weak demons and there's stronger demons. And I've learned something in deliverance. That sometimes when a person's, when, where there's people watching and you're trying to deliver someone and people are there watching, there might, somebody might be that has a spirit and these spirits and that, they strengthen each other. And you've got to say to the people, please leave. And then the person gets delivered right away. So they work together. There's ranks and orders. So principalities are fallen angels, but they're to be displaced, and we're to take their See, we're being brought up into that place. They're being pushed down. That's the end time tribulation, is principalities being pushed out of the heavens, where the church is going to come up and take their place. And then they'll be dealt with, they'll be locked up for a thousand years. Just this thousand years, just, just, just let me share one thing quickly Why, the, on, on the millennium this empowering and why the church is the one that the Lord's using. Satan said that he could rule better than God. Basically, I will ascend, I will sit in the side, I will be like... All creation heard that. One-third of the stars fell. That would be principal of the angels believed him, that he could rule better than God. Well, we have 6,000 years of history as to how he rules. Hatred, violence, starvation, war, murder, famine... So if Satan were to be brought up before God today and judged, Satan would probably say something like this. Well, nobody could rule human beings, not even you. 
he would say that to God. Nobody could rule. God, God would say to Satan, you didn't do very, look at, look at the mess. They would say, well, nobody could rule humans, not even you. What would God say? He has never, he's only ruled, see the word is this, if any man comes up, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Discipleship is conditional. Salvation is a free gift, but you, discipleship, the submission, that's conditional. The Lord has only ruled those that have given him permission. He has never ruled the nations, the world. Therefore, all creation saw now 6,000 years as to how Satan rules. They have never seen how God rules. But they're going to. But because, at, because Satan deceived Adam and laughed at God and thought he, he frustrated the purpose of God, God in his infinite wisdom said, Now, this rule is going to come through the very ones that you deceived. He's going to rule the nations through the church. And the word says, Paul said that. He says, he says, he says you know, this thing about judging. Don't you know that you're going to judge the world? See, him, to him that overcomes will I give authority over the nations. He'll rule with a rod. That's, the, that's that demonstration as to how God rules. <coughs> and so we're being prepared and made ready. And that is, that is a rule in power, the power of God, that will bring righteous judgment, peace, and joy. And so there has to be that empowering. We've got to become, and that's the body. And somehow we have the idea that we're just going to live a nice, comfortable life. As long as we stay saved, we'll all go to heaven and walk on streets of gold. Well, there's, there's a heaven and there's probably streets of gold. But, uh, but there's a in-between <coughs> the, the eternal ages is, is, is the fact that God's going to rule, that these na all the nations are going to be ruled. See, Satan, Satan announced to principalities and powers that he could govern or rule better than God. The Lord brought Adam, placed two trees in the garden, the tree of life, a root out of a dry ground that hath no form or calmness. When we see it, there's no beauty that will desire it. Spirituality is never attractive to the world. But what about sin? It's pleasant to the eye, it's good for food, and it's to be desired. Made it easy. Man went that way. So we have, so Satan became the prince of this world, and, and all creation, whatever that is out there, they've seen how he rules. Now they're about to see how God rules. Today and tomorrow, I'm preparing a people. Now what I want to say is this, in the Old Testament, Jesus said today and tomorrow, the Lord said to Israel, today and tomorrow, wash your clothes. Remember that? I didn't say this, but I want to, this, this, this is powerful. If you really hear what I'm saying, Israel was called to come up to a land that flowed with milk and honey. That's millennial. God said, I will come down in the sight of all the people. That's millennial. <laughs> Tell the people to wash their clothes today and tomorrow. The third day I'll come down in the sight of all the people. That's millennial. Israel was offered the millennial rule. But, but when the power of God began to manifest, they backed up. And they said, we don't want that. The Lord said, okay, I'll withdraw into a temple, a cubicle, a ten by ten. But down the road, I'm going to raise up a bunch of nobodies, a bunch of Gentiles. I'm going to raise them up. That will respond to my glory. Today and tomorrow I cast out devils and do cures. Today and tomorrow I wash clothes and I cast. See, same thing. In other words, the millennium was offered to Israel and they reject it. Or it's all right, I'll, do it. I'll, do, I'll raise up a church. See, it was offered to them. There would have been no church. It's there. It's in the book. There would have been no church. But they backed up and they said, we don't want this. We don't want it. We don't like it. <laughs> so they lost it. So now we have the opportunity. 
by the grace of God, we're going to accept, we're going to move in. And the, the empowering, see, because he's going to rule through the body, the church. That's his intention. He was going to do it through Israel. He said, Israel, you are my witness. See, he said that. He said, he said you're my witness. He said, but they rejected. He said to the church, you're my witness. You shall, receive, you shall be witnesses. He had said that to Israel. They, they rejected it. So then there's that empowering and there's this, this, this rule is with a rod of iron. Literally, you're going to see, it's going to be an enforced righteousness, but it's going to come through the church. That means there's an authority. To, see, that's the, that's the restoration of the end time apostolic that's being restored. It has to do with government, with judgment. And it's, it's an end time thing. So the Lord has to have a people that he can trust with that authority to use it rightly because he will share gifts but he will not share his glory he's preparing a people and so we're in that time and i believe what i'm saying is absolutely true to the book to the word of god that i'm saying what the book says and and we're privileged i believe this place was raised up for the preparation to have a part in the preparation of of an end time people for this higher purpose and it includes the that 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 prevailing. See, we're at time that presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. There's there's that prevailing to bring forth the Christ, the purpose of the Lord.